Join us as we unravel the complex world of ultra-processed foods and their impact on our health. It's Dr. Victoria and George. Today, let's dive into a topic that concerns all of us, the connection between ultra-processed foods and the ongoing obesity pandemic. In this modern era where convenience often takes center stage, we find ourselves surrounded by a plethora of food choices. But what's lurking behind those shiny packages? Join us as we unravel the complex world of ultra-processed foods and their impact on our health. Our journey begins with a term you might have heard before, but maybe not, ultra-processed foods, UPFs. These are those products that undergo extensive processing, transforming them from their natural state into something quite different. In the past, our research focus was predominantly on individual nutrients. The idea was that by consuming enough of the right nutrients, we could safeguard our health. This approach led to the development of dietary guidelines and food pyramids aimed to ensure that we received the proper mix of vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients. However, our research ideas have changed some. And with that, the emergence of new research. A new diet and health paradigm has taken shape. This paradigm acknowledges that it's not just about nutrients or individual foods, it's also about how these foods are processed and prepared. Ultra-processed foods, they sound intriguing, don't they? They're some of our favorite treats. Don't we all have a favorite kind of chip or packaged cookie? These are foods that have undergone extensive processing, often various methods like chopping, pasteurizing, even adding synthetic ingredients. Think about those packaged snacks, sugary beverages, and fast foods. An interesting concept that some research studies have found is that these ultra-processed foods don't have the same water content as in their original forms. This may be a contributing factor to the increased caloric intake many people have while eating these foods. If there's more water, it will take more space and have a greater safety signals going to the brain. The issue with ultra-processed foods lie not just in their processing, but in their potential impact on our health. Studies have shown that diets high in ultra-processed foods can lead to excess calorie intake, weight gain, and poor diet quality. So let's talk about the complexity of diet. There are over 26,000 distinct biochemicals present in our food, yet our understanding has been limited to tracking around 150 key nutritional components. This means that many beneficial compounds remain unquantified and unaccounted for. Ultra-processed foods can have a variety of mechanisms that impact our health, from potentially harmful additives to altered glycemic response. These foods can affect our metabolism and overall well-being. Food processing itself is not all bad. In fact, food processing is what turns fresh ingredients into the products that we find on our plates. From washing to cooking, these processes are essential for making food safe and convenient to eat. Amidst the realm of ultra-processed foods, the real heroes are real foods. I know someone who enjoys a morsel of salmon. The dietary guidelines that promote whole, minimally processed foods can be your best allies in the journey towards better health. Why not try an experiment for a whole week? Can you cook your own meals at home? Meal prep so you have snacks and meals for school and work so that you can avoid those ultra-processed foods when you're hungry. How do you feel after doing that? Can you avoid drive throughs and fast food for a whole week? Give it a go and see how you feel. Thank you for joining us today, our healthcare team. We hope that you'll join us next time. Bye-bye.